The following content is intended for mature audiences. This material is created for the usage of harm reduction and drug education. I am not condoning the consumption of any illegal psychoactive substances. There are stories of people who prefer Molly over ecstasy and vice versa because they heard one is pure over the other. There are folks out there who've heard through the grapevine that someone's cousin died from taking an ecstasy, so they're only open to Molly. And even the news is guilty of confusing folks when reporting drug-related cases. Ecstasy. Molly. Ecstasy. Molly. Ecstasy. Today I'll be providing you all with evidence-based information relating to this drug. First and foremost, I'd like to clear up a misconception that's just circulating through our society. What is this? Molly and ecstasy are synonymous. What is meant by this is these are two made up names of the same thing. The mind-altering chemical compound that exists is called 3,4-methylene-dioxymethamphetamine or MDMA. In other words, you will test positive for methamphetamine. MDMA has sibling sister molecules that tend to produce very similar effects. One called methylene dioxyamphetamine or MDA and the other methylene dioxyethylamphetamine, MDEA. This information that I've provided to you all can maybe answer the question as to how this whole Molly and ecstasy situation arise. I'm listening. Someone was probably unknowingly given MDA or MDE thinking it was their normal dose of MDMA and kind of felt the difference. Now this is very unlikely because many folks who experiment can't distinguish which is which. So usually you have folks who instead blame it on the concentration. Also, pure MDMA only consists of MDMA. Many street samples sold out here contain additives. Additives are different ingredients that you will find mixed up with the main chemical compound MDMA. Uh, very common additives that you'll find in um, many samples out in these streets are caffeine, ephedrine. Ephedrine is a medication that's used to help people with low blood pressure. You also find ketamine, amphetamine, a very popular amphetamine that we all have probably heard of is called Adderall. And you ask why are people adding these unnecessary ingredients into these doses? What's the point? Well, the main reason is for producers to reduce production costs. These additives are the real reason why people think there's a difference between ecstasy and molly and not the actual active chemical compound itself. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. If you're unaware, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy is in a clinical phase three trials to be legal for medical purposes specifically for those suffering from PTSD. Now, this is gonna be administered with several therapy sessions under the supervision of a mental health provider. MDMA is considered an upper because it stimulates several brain chemicals called dopamine, which helps with motivation, serotonin contributing to happiness, and norepinephrine, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. Now, when you put this all in a blender, you will see an increase of empathy of oneself, positivity, compassion, trust, and feeling of closeness. By mouth is the most common way of ingesting this drug. Now this is another part where the confusion lies with this whole Molly and ecstasy conversation. You all, I'm sure, have seen um, the popular symbol or character press pill form. Another form it comes in is loose white powder. And lastly, you see this in a clear caps, all brown or all white crystals. Clinical trial doses usually range from 80 to 125 milligrams. Now this is when things get tricky because when you're dealing with unregulated substances, it's hard to kind of determine the dose that you are ingesting. Now researchers have reported from the samples that have been collected that the ones circulating in the streets are about 30 to 150 milligrams, but then there have been some that have reported to have 250 to 300 milligrams. Typical onset is usually 30 minutes to one hour. When I say onset, this means when a drug has been broken down by the liver and the effects are starting to take over. Some people have reported to feel tingling in their fingers and toes. Peak, which is when you feel this at its maximum level, it's usually one to two hours. And the duration, which is how long the effect lasts, usually ranges between six to eight hours. 
people have reported dehydration, blurred vision, fast heart rate, thirst, increased blood pressure, quenching of the teeth, sweating, and sexual dysfunction. Thank you for watching and please spread their awareness and also be safe.